Hello guys and welcome back. Today I'm kicking off this uh, book series, uh, A Practical Guide to Kabbalistic Symbolism by Garrett Knight. So I'll do um, chapter one. Today I'll try to do a chapter per each video depending how how big the chapters get. I'm not sure yet, but that's my that's my plan. One chapter per per video. And before we start, um, just take everything with a grain of salt. Even the author said that in the introduction, especially since the book was uh, written uh, a while ago, it's pre pre old by now, and there's maybe there's better uh, sources uh, about this. I think it it was right in the let's see if I can find it here maybe in the 70s yes this is from uh, 1978 and he said that there are some like minor mistakes and uh, and so on because he was young when he read in this this book and he also said he made some uh, draconian <laughs> remarks on the homosexuality which seemed fairly um, common during that time so just keep that in mind as we move on with this uh, with the series so let's let's start so according to to the author tonight the the Kabbalah is a is a valuable tool for understanding the inner nature of things, and that includes human nature. Uh, that's by examining their out outward aspects. And the author quotes uh, Paracelsus, who wrote that uh, Kabbalah provides access to the occult and and the mysteries. So Knight proposes. Uh, his his purpose in writing the book is to demonstrate that Kabbalah remains as useful today as it was in the past. So instead of providing a history of its usage or analysis of its origin and things like that, he, he intends to give us, the, the readers, the opportun opportunity to, to try Kabbalah for ourselves and to judge its uh, effects and effectiveness based on uh, our own experience which i thought was pretty cool so the book is not just uh, a theoretical treaties uh, but a practical guide to those who who seek a psychic and uh, spiritual adventure and paracelsus wrote that the kabbalah can help us understand the inner nature of things like people trees plants and more by examining the outer nature of, of things, we can understand their inner nature, or reality, or essence. This idea is not unique, and fits in with um, with idealist philosophy. The, the Hermetic schools believe that examining people can lead to understanding God, and that... Um, uh, nature both hides and reveals God. In simpler terms, everything that exists in the physical world is a result of things happening at a higher level or a higher realm. And we can trace these things back to the main uh, to the main cause, and that is God. This follows the idea of as above, so below. Again, I mentioned this a bunch of times in basically all my videos. Um, so people have um, more control over their lives than the physical world does. Most people are controlled by outside factors. But someone who is superior is able to code superior is able to take control of their own life by making decisions and influencing their their environment 
They're, they don't have like a victim mentality, basically. This is a person in control of their own faith. Uh, let's take a, a closer look at uh, Paracelsus' uh, idea. He believed that by using Kabbalah, we could understand the person's inner self by looking at their external appearance and surroundings. So this includes everything in the natural world like trees, herbs, roots, stones, you name it. Basically, he thought that there's an inner truth or essence to things that goes beyond their out outward appearance and that can um, we figure out the inner truth from the outside. And this idea again aligns with the idealist philosophy and teachings of the hermetic schools because um, it, it holds the that examining human humans can lead to a better understanding of God and nature. Um, so according to Paracelsus, everything in the physical world is a result or a cause from a higher plane. So it's uh, kind of like a mirror, if you think about it that way. Um, so Paracelsus saw the various forms in nature as um, experiments in the great laboratory of life he thought the idea of natural selection was logical but saw saw it as a as a stretching uh, coincidence too too far instead he believed that the divine plan was the most logical and satisfying explanation for the existence of things <clears throat> however belief in the divine plan doesn't mean denying the limitations of the physical world the laws of physics chemistry and biology existed before life and life has to abide by them but these laws don't cause beauty or any other purpose of life they're they're simply set a condition they set the conditions it's possible to believe that there are forms of life in, in other stars and other planets that have um, and they have adopted uh, adapted and um, they're thriving in those environments for instance one can imagine beings made of fire existing on the sun and this idea is certainly more plausible than the notion that our planet is the only inhabited um well, with thousands of, within like thousands of uh, light years. So he's basically saying that th there's probably things on other planets. If life wants to exist, it, it will, regardless of the, um, the conditions. It will all adapt to basically anything. Then once it has uh, adapted to those conditions, it will find its own way of expressing itself. Not because of but in accordance with the with the conditions. So this brings us back to the statement made by a Paracelsus who believed that the inner nature that creates the outer form can be deducted from that form. He recommended the use of a Kabbalah, a system based on symbolic correspondence to do so. However, this this system should not be confused with the pseudoscience that emerged during the Middle Ages, which were just the misguided applications of the same general idea. And Paracelsus himself, being a, a man of his time, was not immune to that type of error. He believed, for example, that a herb with the uh, prickly leaves was excellent for curing uh, internal itching and that another herb with uh, roots that resembled armor could provide protection against weapons it would um, take a lot of faith nowadays to trust in such remedies and preventions but many still pay good money for books claiming to their to tell their um, character or fortune based on letters of their name and remnants of their tea or coffee cups and so on 
So all all these superstitions have their roots in the same uh, in the same source, and it is unfortunate that the idea of the occult often leads many intelligent individuals to dismiss it as nonsense. This mirrors the um, the way in which less tolerant people in the past saw it as uh, witchcraft and dealt with it harshly. It's a burning of the people that they saw as witches, basically. The lesson to be learned from this is not to dismiss all concepts related to the occult without further examination, without looking further into it. Just as our ancestors did not distinguish between the useful and harmful aspects of it, of the occult. So Paracelsus goes on to say that the Kabbalah provides access to hidden and mysterious uh, enabling us to understand the inner nature of people and the meaning in, of encrypted books and messages. And interestingly, after discussing this, uh, these uh, mis mysteries and uh, hidden concepts, he returns to the idea the, the key to it all is, again, like I mentioned in my other videos, the key to all of this is understanding of oneself. The famous inscription at the Delphic Oracle, Know Thyself, is the starting point and the ultimate goal and end to all uh, spiritual growth. So the, the words occult and uh, esoteric both mean hidden and are often used to describe the mystery teachings as I explained in my other videos is basically saying the same thing in general usage the word mystery refers to something that is secret or mysterious in the religious context uh, it refers to a, a truth that transcends human understanding revealed by God in its original usage, it refers to a trade or a craft. When referring to the mystery teachings as a school of initiation, the word encompasses all the all those meanings. It is also important to note that much nonsense has been written in the past about the quote keys of power and occult secrecy. This is often due to ignorance or a desire for, for pride or boasting. The teachings of the mysteries, also known as the Yoga of the West, are considered hidden because they cannot be explained to the outsiders. The Kabbalah can be thought of as a map to the mystical experience, but it ultimately depends on the individual's uh, willingness to to use it for practical purposes and not just for intellectual understanding. Smelling the, the flowers from a seed of from a seed catalog is not the same as experiencing their scent firsthand. Just uh, as having an intellectual grasp of Kabbalah is not the same as experiencing its uh, spiritual uh, benefits, and I'm guilty of that. <laughs> I've only read about it so far, but I'll be putting it into practice as I'm following this book, and you can join me to do the same. Um, so Knight explains the explains the importance of the of secrecy in the esoteric or the, the mystical practices. And he, he, he basically says that they, those experiences, they cannot be described into, into words. And that is best for the interested uh, person to experience it for, for themselves. And this reminds me of, of psychedelics all of a sudden, because uh, after he experienced the uh, 
like a, a a big trip you can't really put into words what you experienced and other people cannot relate to that and you can really put into into language language is very uh, limit limited so you maybe you can explain maybe five percent of what you what you have experienced so that's that just reminded me of uh, of psychedelics all of a sudden he then goes on to explain that in the mystery school a group a group mind is set up uh, which helps each member of the of the group to progress more more quickly however for this process to work it's necessary to keep the the work of the group uh, a secret from uh, those, those outside of it and he he discusses the idea when working with uh, with Kabbalah it is more effective effective to work with the group and I guess this is basically what <laughs> what we're we're doing uh, practically um, this is because uh, a group can set up a group mind that influences each member's consciousness and this can lead to telepathic communication between uh, members and secrecy is important in this work because it deeply affects the subconscious and can lead to more effective results however it is only secrecy in the practical use that it is uh, relevant to to the specific group so obviously won't have any secrecy here <clears throat> and he goes on to say that working with a group can also enhance religious worship and it is important to have uh, one skilled expert in the in the group to train others if a group of uh, amateurs try to perform ceremonial work for example without proper proper training this can result in uh, either nothing or in it will have negative effects as the subconscious um, as the subconscious uh, potencies behind the the mystical symbol can be can be very uh, powerful so if you don't know what you're doing it's probably best not to do it so the the kabbalah is a um, system that explores the relationship between mystical symbolism in which as Paracelsus says it allows us to access the hidden depths of our minds beyond the limits of of reason um, this system helps us to understand the hidden meaning behind symbolic writings which is often used to express mystical ideas and experiences it could be seen as the opposite of the mystical process a natural mystical uh, a natural mi mystic may have a, a vision from what they perceive as the quote the grace of god end quote and then try to express it through symbols or metaphors in their language the kabbalah by studying symbolism allows the kabbalists to uncover the underlying reality that the mystic attempts to to convey to express this applies not only to christian mysticism but to all other religious beliefs including uh, pa uh, paganism with the help of kabbalah one can experience the beliefs of the ancient greeks with figures like um, Pallas, Athene, Zeus, Demeter, and the other Olympians, the Egyptians, uh, the Egyptian Isis, Ra, Osiris, Horus, and so on, and the Celts with the how do I pronounce this? Carid, Carid one? I have no idea, and the American 
Indians with the money to and Hiawatha and so on through human uh, throughout human history as we we search for for the divine so like i mentioned this can be used for not only for mystical christianity but for all the other uh religious beliefs so these uh sealed uh books and um epistles include not only the bible but also other mystical texts such as the egyptian book of the dead which i have the high history of the holy grail the i ching or the book of changes which which i also have those are just a few to uh, to name the kabbalah is a system that explores the the relationship between mystical um, symbols and we can use that to unlock the deep parts of our minds that lie beyond the beyond reason so in essence the the kabbalah is a is a tool that can help us to compare different religious beliefs not just um, academically but also in a practical practical sense this is because the inner structure of the human psychology is the same across all races and creeds and all approaches to to god must be similar all human diversity can be seen as a different angles leading to the center where god resides it uh, may seem impossible to reconcile monotheistic religions such like Christianity with pagan religions that uh, worship many gods but that is not the case God works in um, in many ways and even Christians pray to God in many different aspects such as the Father the Son the Holy Spirit judge of the wicked redeemer of sinners and and so on in a similar sense uh, pagans worship many different gods that were different truly they're just different aspects of the of this one true god so they're different uh, emanations just like in the tree of, of of life in the kabbalistic tree of life all emanate from from kether from that one sephiroth the reality is that um, worship is a matter of terminology with both pagan and modern worship being expressions of the same belief in the the one god um, universal symbols on the other hand are symbols that have a universal meaning and are not limited to one specific culture or tradition they're often based on archetypal images and themes that are common to all human beings. For example, the symbol of the sun is uh, often used to represent light, life, vitality. While the moon symbolizes the subconscious, the feminine and the cyclical nature of life. These symbols can be found in art in they can be found in religion in uh, mythology and other cultural expressions across the the world in conclusion the kabbalah is a very valuable system because it provides it provides us with a key to, to the study of uh, comparative religion and serves as a practical uh, theosophy. The ten emanations of God and the associated uh, symbols are a significant aspect of, of the Kabbalah and it offers a, a way to understand the many aspects of the divine whether it is the ar arbitrary or universal symbols they serve as a tool for exploring the the mysteries of the divine and the 
inner workings of the human psyche. In truth, uh, mythology should be seen as a form of symbolic language that tells a deeper story of the human experience and the relationship between humanity and the divine. It is not just a collection of historical events or psychological projections, but a rich tapestry of meaning and wisdom that transcends time and space. And by exploring the symbolism in, in mythology, we can gain uh, an insight into the, the universal tr uh, truths and uh, themes that are relevant to all human beings. It's deep in our psyche, regardless of, of the culture or the background or anything like that. So again, uh, the symbolism plays a crucial role in understanding of the, the, the world and our place in it. And we can gain, um, by exploring those symbols, we can gain a deeper insight into the nature of reality and our place within it. There are two ways people try to explain mythology. Um, first, by using psychology and the second, by using history. However, myths have a wide range of meanings, just like symbols. One symbol doesn't necessarily represent only one thing, it can represent many things. Um, so, where did I leave off? Oh yeah, however, myths have a wide range of meanings from natural to spiritual and the the Tree of Life symbol is a good example of a comprehensive symbol that can can relate to different mythologies and uh, occult symbol system systems like uh, astrology, numerology, alchemy, and tarot. It is the foundation of the Western mystery tradition, and this is the end of the first chapter I hope to you, you enjoyed it and um, in the second chapter I already read that I already finished it and this, in the second chapter we will take a look at the at the yoga um, at the different uh, forms of yoga that we should incorporate in our day-to-day -day life so we will explore Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Gana Yoga, Karma Yoga, and Hatha Yoga. And keep in mind that um, yoga is a, is, a, is a philosophy too, it's a philosophical path. It's not just about turning your body into a, a pretzel and, and so on, it's, it's more, than, um, more than that. And again, I uh, want to remind you to take everything with the with the grain of salt, as the author mentioned in the in the beginning. Um, yeah, this was this was it. I'll I'll catch you guys in the in the next one. Take care.